For those of us who lived through the chaos of war, creation was survival. When Dior says creation is survival, for him, in this terrible situation, he has a sister who's gone, captured by the, the Germans. He's in a terrible life situation. And the only anchor he has is what he's making. Uh, and so to, to push into that space and keep trying to create is his way of being able to survive. And I think, you know, we kind of have a sense of that too. We, you know, we work in this sort of stuff. There's a sense in which you really start to become alive when you've got something that you're working on. Um, and so, yeah, it's that. Knowing that Chanel didn't have a family, what I mean by that is that her mother died when she was 11. Her father left the whole family behind afterwards. One of her sisters committed suicide, the other one you know, died in uh, South America, not knowing where she was. And she had two brothers that were put into, uh, an, you know, families. So she was totally disconnected from her family. And the fact that she had a nephew from her sister's, uh, you know, uh, suicide, uh, she really took care, tried to take care of her, of him. And so when he was the prison, I'm sorry, I'm telling the whole story of Chanel now. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> when her, her nephew was a prisoner in Germany um, and she tried everything she could in order to save him. And she went into places that probably morally was, you know, uh, questionable. But the show is also dealing with her emotions uh, and the back and forth, you know, how far can she go with that decision or not making the decision? And, and you following the, you know, all the, 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 the capacity she has in order to make, you know, big decisions of actually going into uh, being in touch with German people and having a relationship with Spatz, who was half English, half German but work with uh, the intelligence of Germany. So it's, um, it's been such a complex situation for the, throughout the 10 episodes. I w it's very hard to define her you know, in, few, in a few lines because it takes five years and a life before. And I think it's also important that the occupation, the Nazi occupation of Paris lasted for four years. And it's not as if two years into the occupation, the French knew, oh, we only have another two years of this, mm -hmm. that it could, have been the rest of, it could have been the rest of their lives. So for Chanel and the decisions that she was making, when she says the line, remind me which side I'm on, it's also because what's changing is the current situation of how the French are being treated. So it's trying to navigate that survival while the circumstances are dictating that in order to survive, one must make different choices. But also you have to know that French people hated Germans before the, 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 the beginning of uh, uh, the World War II because of the First War that was so damaging for France. So she was as well. I heard that she, when she heard the Germans were coming to Paris, she just screamed and banged the door and couldn't stand and stopped her shop, stopped everything, and went away in the south of France. But then, because the nephew was, was, uh, was you know, had a, a typhus and were a prisoner for two years, then, you know, the survivor in her just went and did what she had to do. And from an outside perspective, it could be, you know, questioned. But inside, it, 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 there's, uh, you understand the mechanism of, of that need. Well, I, I think the thing he struggled with the most is um, it was a, a wish of Nazi authorities to move that whole business to Berlin and, and have it be a kind of showcase and showpiece for um, the Nazi party in the end. And uh, he didn't want that to happen. And I think like many people do, 
uh, always in life in in any form let alone in extraordinary circumstances like the occupation of, of France at least a good part of France people make accommodations with their with their possibilities and with the life in front of them um he wanted to uh keep people employed keep that business in France and uh, he did everything he could including um, having his designers design gowns for Nazi mistresses and wives or both of the above and um, he, he made his accommodations. I think Dior and uh, Christian Dior's, uh, Christian and Catherine's relationship was um, such a beautiful one inside their family. And I think that losing Catherine was a devastating thing for Dior in his life and in his work. And um, learning more about her journey, being part of the French resistance, being captured and taken to a Nazi working camp for, I think, eight, nine months? Yes. Um, and surviving, having no idea, like if she'd ever make it back or ever see him again. Um, uh, it was just like such a such an incredible backstory to this brand that I, you know, had had learnt, had known so much about, but never really understood the history. Um, and her becoming the sort of namesake for Miss Dior is really um, beautiful and something that everyone can connect to today, but maybe don't understand the reasons why. Um, and so I hope that people enjoy learning about her because she was an incredible woman. I think there's also a really interesting story that Adam that we had covered along the way that when he designed the perfume for her and she first smelled it, it was her, she commented it was her first return to life, which is really an amazing emotional thing for Dior, for both of them. He already knew how to do it. Yep. He, 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 he's, he's the real deal. Well, well, John has had over 25, how many, 26? I did 26 26 collections. Yeah. So we had John around and by osmosis, we now can all do it. <laughs> but we had a very good customer. She's really excellent. Wonderful. Karen Sorrell. Yeah. Uh, Boom, drop the mic. 